Hey guys, it's Miss Gephardt, and let's go through and knock out some notes on the spread of disease. So let's start it off with um, what a microbe is. Okay, so all these vicious looking critters right here, these are micro microbes. So a microscopic organism that can cause disease. And you guys know this stuff from the notes we had previous to this. So they're gonna be things like bacteria and, and parasites and a fungus, things like that. They're things that cause some kind of disease. Boom. All right, so we have um, non-communicable diseases and communicable diseases. So a non-communicable disease is a disease that's not going to be passed from person to person um, in terms of like if I sneeze, I'm not going to get Alzheimer's because I sneezed on my hands and gave you a high five. Um, I'm not going to, you know, blow my nose and not wash my hands and not get cancer because I give you a high five. That's not how these diseases work, okay? So these are diseases that are uh, more than likely going to be passed um, in terms of maybe genetics or maybe could just be exposure to um, outside uh, sources or whatever. Okay, sometimes the causes aren't going to be known for these, um, but again, genetics, you know, I know you're getting it from one person to the another, when you're thinking about, you know, your mom giving it to you, but it's not the same thing as a, a communicable disease. A communicable disease means um, I'm transmitting it to you, like I touched a doorknob and you touched the doorknob and you got sick. So that's pat. That's what it means by communicable. So in terms of non-communicable genetics, you have no control over that. Um, lifestyle choices. So think about, you know, um, drinking, drug use, smoking. Um, all those kind of issues can definitely bring about cancer. I mean, you you can get cancer from being, you know, drinking lots of alcohol. You can get cancer from not drinking alcohol. It, it doesn't seem to have a, a real preference. I mean, you could or you couldn't. Um, environmental factors. Maybe you live near um, uh, uh, some kind of factory that's spewing out chemicals into the air um, or even things into your water sources. Um, those could also lead to um, a non-communicable disease. All right, so now communicable diseases, these are diseases that are going to be caused by viruses or bacteria or parasites. And they're, think of communicable, um, and this is kind of important to, to be able to differentiate the two. Ooh, not that one. But um, communicable is contagious, okay? So that means, you know, I go, how to, and then I give you a big old high five. I'm going to be passing it to you, okay? Contagion is a term we use to describe how a disease is transmitted either directly or indirectly. So, um, that you know, that's, that's a term basically saying it's contagious. It's I either sneezed in my hands and touched your hand, or I sneezed in my hands and I touched the doorknob. That's my cat, so I don't think I've got ghosts in my house. That was just a cat coming in my bathroom. Um, but if I touch a doorknob um, and then you come by two hours later and you touch that doorknob as well, that's an indirect way of catching it, but it is still contagious, either way of transmission. All right, so most contagious diseases are spread through direct human contact or close proximity. So Mr. Whale right here and Mr. Scuba Diver should probably not do a high five because that would be direct human contact. Um, think about school. I mean, it's unfortunate to say this, but because you guys are in such tight quarters with each other, this is why diseases go through our schools like there's no tomorrow. When flu, when the flu season comes or if there's some kind of tummy bug, all of a sudden one of you gets it, then another one gets it, then another one gets it. You're right next to each other, okay? Um, your partner at your seat is probably not sneezing all over you, but just the sheer fact of sneezing, they're sticking particles in the air and you're going to inhale them. And therefore possibly get sick. All right, so what are carriers? A carrier is an individual who's infected with the disease, okay? They can be sick with the disease and still be actively spreading it. So this person is something we'd like to term, um, this is a kind of understand it, they're, eight, they're symptomatic, okay? So you know they're sick. They're coughing, they're sneezing, their nose is running, you know, they've got that like, they just look sick, look about them. They're a carrier. They are just infecting everybody, okay? Um, they're sneezing all over your tabletops. They're sneezing on their hands. They're touching doors and windows and whatever, textbooks, markers, crayons, pencils, everything. So if they have done this and then they go grab something, 
they're still spreading disease actively. That's a carrier, okay? Now, asymptomatic people. These are the people that you would be most afraid or need to be most cautious of. I shouldn't say afraid, but cautious of. These are people who don't know they're ill and they have no symptoms. They're asymptomatic. There's nothing about them that says, I'm sick, and yet they're actively spreading a disease. So something like HIV, okay, it's a prime example of a, a disease that a virus, you could have HIV and you look like everybody else. It's not like you have this big old like beacon of light pointing at you saying, I've got HIV. It's not how it works. You could be actively have, you have it going on in your body and you could be spreading it to people and you don't know and they don't know. Okay. Those are asymptomatic. All right. So a vector, a vector is going to be an organism that passes the disease from one to another. So um, with these, I want you to think of bugs, bugs, worms, mosquitoes are going to be probably one of the most deadly of vectors. Um, but they're the organism that's going to, you know, mosquito, me, lands on me, bites me, sucks my blood, gets up, me, goes to somebody else, bites them, sucks their blood. In that process, that mosquito is actually spitting back some of the blood from the previous bite. So they're, they're just spitting on it, kind of passing that along. So this is where diseases can just kind of be spread very quickly in areas just because of mosquitoes. Um, other types of insects, worms, um, we can even classify things like rats, um, the fleas, not the rats themselves, but the fleas on the rats. If you have, you know, back in the day, way, way long ago day, um, with the plague, the bubonic plague, um, it was spread because of rats, but it wasn't the rats itself, it was the fleas on the rats. So the rats were just kind of chilling in people's houses, and the little fleas are jumping around and biting your blood, biting you and having a little blood exchange, and they spread the disease. Okay. All right, so conditions that are conducive to disease, which means conditions that are going to help make disease worse or, or could, could lead to disease. First off, genetics. And you have no control over your mama and your daddy and your grandma and grandpa and whoever else in your family. So if heart disease runs in your family, heart disease runs in your family. It's a genetic, you're, you're genetically, you know, predisposed to that. And you're going to have to be careful. Poor eating habits. You know, I, I watch you guys. I do lunch detention. I see what you all eat. Some of you guys eat chips and cookies and ice cream and sodas and all that kind of stuff. Um, and nothing in, in moderation is bad, but when that's your entire meal, you don't have any vegetables or fruits or proteins or any kind of balance to it, that's gonna, that could lead to disease. Um, insect bites. So we go out in the summertime, you know, you want to wear insect repellents in your yard. You don't want to have... Um, standing water because standing water is going to promote mosquito growth because mosquitoes are going to hatch their eggs there so things like that if you ever eat anything that's undercooked you're going you're you're kind of exposing yourself to disease um and then the, the environment you live in okay if your house i mean this is the best part don't make a messy room don't let your bedroom be dirty okay if you've got a sandwich that you ate two weeks ago by the way, that's disgusting, but that is an environment that's going to be a, a host of all kinds of stuff. You're bringing in bugs and little critters and all that kind of stuff. So clean houses. Um, I'm sure some of y'all have ever seen the, the show Hoarders on TLC, where those people live with like lots and lots of stuff. It's full of potential for disease because of all the bugs and the mice and the rats and all that kind of stuff that's in there. Another thing that's conducive is just simply living close to people. And I know that's kind of funny, but think about um, cities. Think about cities. We have all these like skyscrapers and all these like New York City and all these people live very close together versus if you lived in, you know, the suburban areas where you have house, house, and then space, and then a house, and then space, and then a house. Just that close proximity is going to make it more conducive for disease. All right, disease fighting strategy. So what can you do to help yourself? Well, reduce your stress. I know you guys are, you know, like stress for, you know, kids and all, but you have stressors. Some of you may not be doing well academically. You may have things going on at home. Um, 
you have to find ways to reduce that stress. If it's exercising, if it's reading a book, if it's listening to music, something. Um, eating healthy, always eating healthy. Okay, you can have a little treat here and there, but remember, eat your vegetables, eat your fruit, drink your milk, eat your chicken, you know, lean chicken, not fried chicken, you know, do all those things to help your body be able to fight disease. Sleep, get enough sleep, get enough exercise, okay, take a walk. Some of you guys are very big athletes, so you're running on the field or whatever, and some of you aren't. Take a walk outside, take your dog for a walk, you know, Put, put your iPod in or whatever and go listen to music, you know, or text or whatever it is. Go to the doctor. Get properly checked out by a doctor when you think you're ill or to prevent yourself, you know, to, to kind of keep yourself um, check, constantly checked up on so that, you know, if, if sickness comes up, your doctor kind of knows what's going on and can help you immediately. A vaccine, and many of you get vaccines, um, a vaccine is a solution that will contain a weakened virus, okay? So when you get, like, the flu vaccine, it's usually a weakened or dead form of the virus that's inserted into your body, and your body is going to um, have to fight it off. In, and so when it fights it off, it remembers how to fight it off. So when it sees it again, it knows exactly what to do, and it takes care of it, okay? Now, antibiotics which are different from vaccines. Antibiotics are used to, to either kill or slow the growth of things like bacteria. They don't work on viruses. They do not work on viruses. You get antibiotics to fight bacterial infections. So if you ever had ear infections or strep throat, you are prescribed antibiotics and they're used to sort of either slow, it, slow up the growth so much that the body can kill it or just kill it completely. Antibiotic resistant bacteria. And so what happens is sometimes bacteria or bacteria, I'm sorry, antibiotics are misused. Maybe you have your, maybe your cousin had strep throat, went to the doctor, had strep throat. They got antibiotics. There was some antibiotic left when they were done. You say, oh, my throat hurts. I have to have strep throat. And you take their medicine. That's a misuse of it because you never were prescribed it by a doctor. So you don't know if you actually had strep throat and that could be a problem. You know how the doctor tells you to take your antibiotics for 10 days? Take it for 10 days. That's also a misuse. Some people stop after seven because they feel fine. That's going to cause bacteria to become resistant to their effects. Okay. And they won't fully die off. And now they're, they, they're like, oh, we know what these people are going to do to us next time. We're going to fight. We're going to we're going to create an even harder way, even better bacteria or whatever. Okay. So now we're going to get into some outbreaks of disease. I'm um, just classifying them, and we're going to do more work with this in class. But we have something called an epidemic. So now an epidemic is when I have a breakout of a disease in an area. So when the flu breaks out in Charlotte, that or in North Carolina, that's going to be an epidemic. Okay. The other term we're going to use is pandemic, and that means it's an epidemic, but it's spreading over a larger um, area. So we're going maybe over continents or whatever. Way back in the I think the 1600s, we had the Spanish influenza, which you know spread all around. Um, the bubonic plague would be a pandemic. It spread all over Europe. Um, so classifications of different diseases as they get bigger and spread over larger areas. Um, the biggest thing for all of you to keep yourself healthy is to do the healthy things. Washing your hands, not sharing things. Don't do my favorite thing I see all the time is that little waterfall thing. Guys, that's gross, okay? If ever someone puts their mouth here, your mouth is full of so many bacteria, boom, you transmit it to everybody. So you might as well go over there and kiss them on the mouth because it's exactly what you're doing. When you guys share clothing, sweatshirts, things like that, anything that's on my stuff and I give it to you, lice, things of that nature, it's spread. So you guys can be, you know, in control of spreading those diseases. If you have any questions, you always know where to find us. Um, and we look forward to having a very wonderful discussion about disease.